Welcome to Mike Ferry TV. It is the week, week of March 2nd. Wow. All I keep reading about and hearing about is this wonderful, horrific, difficult, challenging, exciting for the kids because they're out of school weather we've had in the Northeast and the Mid-Atlantic States. I've heard about it now for weeks. And you know what's interesting? The more I hear about it, the more I recognize that those of you that are good, it doesn't affect you because you can keep taking listings every day in spite of the weather. Oh yes, your listings may not sell as fast. There won't be as many showings, but our job, yours and mine, is to build inventory. And I think bad weather is a wonderful building inventory opportunity. Why? Because as so many of our clients are telling us, in all this crazy weather we've had, there's more people home answering their phones than ever before because people can't leave their house. Oh, gosh darn it, do we feel bad for all the people in the Northeast that have been buried under snow? Of course we do. But guess what? It's part of living in the Northeast. Even Southern Florida was cold last week in the 50s. Wow, isn't that amazing? Nobody could go outside, light your fireplace, put on your fur coat. It's 55 degrees. Folks, let's not have any more excuses as to why we can't produce. Watch, the West Coast has earthquakes. The Northwest has rain. The Southwest has desert. The Midwest has tornadoes. The Southeast has hurricanes. Northeast has snow. There's always a reason why we can't produce. Are you going to let those reasons get in your way? I don't think you're that kind of a person. Let's focus now in March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November to do what we said last week. Let's set some standards for ourselves that are real high so we can be real productive. So I want to continue on last week's discussion by giving you 10 more what I think are very valid, important points on how to become more productive for the balance of this year. Here's what I wrote down first. Know, understand, learn, and use the scripts we give you every day, no exceptions. Well, Mike, I don't like some of your scripts. Well, tell somebody that cares. I've said that time and time again. Well, but your scripts aren't comfortable because you haven't learned them. You haven't practiced them. You haven't role played them. You haven't made them part of who you are. Watch, now think about this. Now let, let's be honest, okay? Can you sit in front of your computer right now? Can you smile and say, hi, my name is Mike, when do you plan on moving? See, I bet you can do it. Okay, don't use my name, use yours. Hi, my name is Betty Lou, when do you plan on moving? How long have you lived at this address? Where'd you folks move from? If you were to move, where would you go next? When would that be? See, these are not complicated scripts. The reason we challenge ourselves on using the scripts is because we're not salespeople by nature. But see, the truth is, you are a salesperson by nature. Well, no, my, my background is nursing and I was a school teacher or I, I was you know, working in a computer, computer lab or I was, I was, wait a minute. Every conversation you have with somebody, you're selling somebody on what your belief is, what you're trying to convince them to do, or trying to convince them of what you think is the right method for that moment. We're all salespeople. The preacher is a salesperson. School teacher is a salesperson. The doctor is a salesperson. You, as a mother and father, are a salesperson. Your kids are salespeople. Now you have the label here, real estate salesperson. And real estate salespeople always know what to say. They always know what to say. And since you don't many times know what to say, take the scripts and use them. Number two, know, understand, and use the numbers that you're working with each day in your favor. I've said this time and time again over the years. Way back, 45 years ago, I used to keep track every day. How many people did I talk to? How many leads did I generate? How many appointments did I set? How many contracts did I get signed? And every day I would write those four numbers down. I did it every day. And then at the end of 30 days, I could say, well, wow, I, I talked to 21 people a day for the last week. That's 105 people, wow. And I actually generated six good leads. And I set three appointments and I got two listings taken. Gee, I wonder if I can do that again. Or what can I learn from that experience? See, we tell our coaching clients all the time, the greatest advantage of the numbers analyzer, which by the way we created, it's been now almost 25, 28 years ago, that numbers analyzer is one of the greatest assets a real estate person can have if they just 
enter the numbers for what they've done each week because if you track your numbers and you talk to your coach, your broker, your manager, each other, you can look quickly and discover what you're doing, what, what you're doing wrong. If you're going on 10 listing presentations and you're getting two listing contracts signed, I will guarantee you, you're doing something wrong. You're not pre-qualifying. You're going out on unmotivated, unqualified appointments. You don't have a script to use when you're on the presentation. You can't handle objections. This, see, all this comes from just knowing the numbers that you have and what they are. Number three, understand that it's going to take three, six, nine, 12, 15 months to create the work habits you want. So let's make March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December part of that 12, 15, 18 months. So every month you can look back and see that you're improving. Every month you can look back and say, I'm making progress towards becoming a great salesperson, a great listing agent. Understand it's going to take a lot of time to change your behavior. Remember last week when I talked about the fact you have to make a commitment every day? Part of the commitment is to changing your behavior. Number four, you have to have a well-defined work schedule and be sure to make it workable. Do you have a schedule? If I showed up in your office right now, would you have a schedule sitting in front of you that tells me exactly what you're doing each hour of the day? See, most people do not have a schedule. Why? Because they don't want to commit. They don't have a schedule because they don't want to have in black and white what they're supposed to do. They don't want to have the guilt of knowing they don't do anything that they've written down. But see, a great real estate salesperson has a schedule. How many hours are you doing administrative work? How many hours are you prospecting? How much time in lead follow-up? How much time in pre-qualifying? How much time in preparing for your listing presentations? How much time in role play and practice? So you do those five or six activities every day scheduled, you're gonna succeed, you can't stop. Number five, consider strongly delegating the non-productive activities to somebody else. If you're in the western half of the United States, escrow companies are very common. Throughout the country, we have great mortgage providers in almost every city, every state, whether it be a bank or a mortgage company. You have people that its only job is to handle the transaction once it's created. Why not allow all the providers out there because there's great providers, mortgage, title, escrow, home inspections, etc., that can do the job that allows you then to go out and do your job to create more transactions for them to do their job. Delegate means to give away, to give up your authority, to give up your responsibility, get somebody else involved. That's what delegation is all about. Well, Mike, I try to handle everything myself. Of course you do. And that's why you don't do much of anything. I wrote down number six. Daily, work on refining your prospecting skills. Daily work on refining your prospecting skills. Because the truth is, if you are prospecting all the time, your skills will improve if you're willing to look at what you've done. Hi, do you want to sell your home? Hi, do you want to sell your home? Hi, do you want to sell your home? First of all, there's no improvement based on that. Look at your prospecting time. Look at the calls you made, look at the contacts, look at the conversations, look at the scripts, look at the responses, look at the objections, and then work on refining those so you can become better at what you do. I wrote down point number seven, simplify your lead follow-up. For the month of March, simplify your lead follow-up. Don't complicate it. You don't have to have 27 software programs. Take a name on a 3x5 card with a phone number. Call them. Folks, do you still have to sell your home? Can we set an appointment for this week? Don't complicate the issue. And then number eight, get rid of, throw away, put through the shredder, toss all of the leads that aren't going to do anything. Quit hoping and praying that somehow through your conversations, you're going to take a non-motivated buyer or seller and through your magical conversation, make them motivated. Watch, either they're going to do something or they're not. If they're not going to do anything, don't hold on to them. Throw away all the bad leads as soon as possible. Number nine, set up more personal accountability. Find a couple agents for the month of March in the office. I had a conversation with a coaching client a couple weeks ago, and I challenged the coaching client just for 24 hours to do one thing. I said, 
I don't want the rest of the week. I don't want the rest of the month. I just want, can you do this for 24 hours? Can you do it just for 24 hours? And of course, we found out he could because he knew that I'd be paying attention and calling him back and asking, which I did. Accountability, watch. Being held accountable to something. Get some good role play partners. Get some good accountability partners. And number 10, during the month of March, April, and May, maximize your personal development. Read more good books. Go to more Mike Ferry seminars. You know, expose your brain to things that are outside of what's normal for you. Have you signed up for the Superstar Retreat in July? Why not? What have you got to lose? It is going to be the best retreat we've ever had by far. Now, I say that every year, but every year it's the best retreat we've ever had so far. See, why would you not go to Las Vegas for that retreat? We're going to have 4,000 plus people that are excited, motivated, and enthused about learning how to sell. And I'm going to show you everything I know on how to sell real estate in high volume in July in four days. Why not be there? That's called a personal development program. Okay, now it's up to you. Last week, I gave you 10 thoughts. This week, I gave you 10 thoughts. Go back and watch the program two or three times. Write them all out carefully. Type them in your computer. Print it out in big words. Now you have list one and list two. And every single day, you read these two lists four, five, six times. Keep yourself on track. At some point, we have to do something. Let's start today doing something more productive than we did yesterday. And it's going to make March a great month. Talk to you next week.